All right, this is a 2004 Chevy Silverado 1500 4L60 four-wheel drive. This thing was working fine. He said all of a sudden it just quit pulling. I think the pump gears broke. That's what I'm suspecting. So we're going to get this apart and see what it needs. <clears throat> Take your lock-up o-ring off first. And this thing's been built before, um, a couple years ago. Let's see what they did. And a lot of times, before you take this off, you can clean this up with a little sandpaper. Um, I got some here. Clean it up. Clean the rest up. If you don't, if it's too hard to pull off, you don't want to force it. Should be good. I'm going to get a new gun one of these days. It's just weak now. You know, it slides off easy. This plug here. You got a 32 millimeter deep socket, six point. Literally just have to press and it's down and you don't break any of the ears off. It just goes straight down. Very easy. <clears throat> and this thing here. Sure, I can see that. Yeah. yeah let's take this off. This is going to be a full rebuild. So, a lot of times I kind of work it out a little bit if you can. And especially if this thing, if you're working on one of these, you just built it. You don't have to rip that o ring off. You try to get behind it if you can. That and just well, this one here, the o ring is going to ruin. You can see the way that it's cocked. Yeah, this thing is, this thing is stuck in there. Crazy. Stuck, you can kind of pry like that. Usually they're not stuck like that. Um, looks like they put a Corvette servo in here. And this is ripped a little bit. One of these seals. Yeah. Not a bad idea. And I like to take. When you take the pump out, you gotta take this bell housing out. It just makes it way easier. It's a lot tighter if you don't take this out. So definitely take this off. Um, and this, this is a T40, I'm sorry. T50 plus, it's a special tool. It's a special Torx tool, it goes here. Take these bolts out. And press hard because these things, the heads like to strip on these. Trip ahead, it's not fun to take out. While we're here, go ahead and run these bolts out of there. Do not pull the pump out yet. 
Take the bolts out. If you try to pull the pump out, you're going to break the locking solenoid and the filter. You don't need to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell this thing's built before the fluid's fresh. The pump gear just went out on it. Better to stay clean, especially if you've never worked on one of these before, so you know where everything goes. See how red this fluid is? Looks like a brand new fluid. Now let's, uh, man. started. Kind of flip it up. All right. There's no magnet in the pan. I don't like that. Rubber pan gasket. That's don't ever put a rubber pan gasket on a transmission. That's ridiculous. still on here or 13 take your 13 out there okay my pick it looks like they put a new harness on here too yeah, new harnesses are a little harder on the plug that's all right man this one is Okay. Okay. Gotta take this solenoid out. Make sure you can see that. So you can get to the 10 millimeter head and the lock up solenoid. All right. Go ahead and pull those out. You don't need to pry it. You can probably pull this out. I'm just being difficult. All right. You see, this this is an aftermarket one. It comes with options. Um, you'd use this one or this white one here. So this white one was plugged in. You might want to mark that. You see. Yeah. Okay, this is the only one that can be used. This one is slotted in a different spot. So you can't unplug it. You can't plug it in wrong. Take all our tens out. See the springs here? 
This thing had a shift kit in it. Not a bad idea, but that's one indication. So on every build, I replace all the solenoids, including the pressure manifold solenoid here. When you're taking this off, if you're not going to replace it, if you just want to clean it up, uh, take it off like that. Don't just pull it off, rock it to the side like that. It breaks the seal O-rings. It's got little pressure O-rings right here so that will rip off. Seven check balls in the valve body and one in the case. They're all going to fall out on you. These are plastic. You can put plastic, plastic ones back in there. These came out of the 4R70, these plastic uh, check balls. That's totally fine. Done it before. It's like a new plate, new separator plate. So hopefully there's not too much wrong with this. And they flipped it. I do that to every one I do, every one I build. Not a bad thing. Most of the time you can kind of wiggle it out of there. that yeah they just left the spring out completely that that's not a bad idea I mean sometimes I'll just double them up but you can put two in there yeah that's probably what I'll do so that's seven and one in the case eight all together You gotta put it in part to get this bolt out. Get that one out. You gotta take that off to get the low reverse piston. Yeah. And yes. A lot of times that doesn't work. A lot of times you can put a magnet here and take it out. Just makes it easier to pull the pull the drums out. Right now, let's take a screwdriver in here. Let's pump out. Hold on. Before I do that, let's see. Yeah, I can see pump pieces broken in there. Okay, we're gonna take this apart in a second. That's the problem here. Just pulls out. 
extra wide band. It's a good band. You can tell they either surfaced this up really good or replaced it with a brand new one. Yeah, this is a brand new reverse drum. Clutches are a little warm, but good for the most part. Four clutches look good. So since the pump broke, you want to check for teeth, uh, chipped out, so looks good. The washer type. Um, Something like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, aftermarket reaction shell or sun shell, however you want to call it. Um, I've actually never seen one of these kind before. It's a bearing type that takes a washer on the other side. Usually that's the other way around, but uh, that'll work. So it doesn't, usually it takes a plastic, um, a plastic washer that goes there. But instead, the aftermarket kit came with this. So I'll reuse it. Looks good. It's tight. Yeah, this is a common problem. So if you transmission never been built, replace this. This one has. <clears throat> it definitely has. Sometimes the anti-clunk spring makes it hard to get this out so you can hit it with a hammer in the back. Brass hammer. This is aftermarket too, which is kind of weird. Okay. Reverse clutches look good. Let's take this root plant out of here. check your rear planet a lot of times these are a little if they're wobbly got to replace them Take your shaft out this four-wheel drive shaft is a lot smaller than a two-wheel drive shaft look for teeth missing anti-clunk spring Over 
the drain. Let's pull it out. Pull it up. filter here if you leave this filter out it'll break the pump within a couple days don't ever leave that filter out for building the, for any reason see what happened here. This thing completely broke. So it's common for this rotor. Sometimes you can get away with doing a rotor kit, but the way that it gouged this up, I'm going to have to put a complete pump assembly on here. It's not a too big of a deal, but... Yeah. So when you buy a new pump from, you know, Transtar or whatever parts company you buy from or uh, TigerTransmissions.com, they're going to come without these valves. Okay. So you got to put these valves back in the new pump that you buy. Not a big deal. It's very easy. So... It's all gutted, so the, main, the only problem here that I saw was a pump. It needs a pump assembly. And that's it. Everything else looks good. I didn't look at the lower, I didn't look at these. <clears throat> I'm going to open up this real quick. It's right here. I don't know if you can see this snap ring here. Got to check the sprag, forward sprag. I like to pull it out like this. Flip it, flip it back over. look brand new that's awesome yeah the only thing wrong with this was a pump it's pretty cool so let's check your sprag make sure it's nice and tight and you can replace the sprag on every build too which i will okay that's everything <laughs>